first episode of the seedling stitch where I will be sharing everything about knitting uh, some knitting book reviews some finished objects and some work in progress knitting objects uh, my name is Athena um, I'm a PhD student in mechanical engineering uh, and I came to you from Vancouver Canada um, uh, where I'm living with my two cute cats and my husband um, so I decided to run this small podcast uh, because I uh, I started learning last year September and I've just been knitting and knitting and knitting I found knitting is quite calming for me especially now in this quite stressful kind of world with everything going on and also personally well I'm doing my PhD that's a lot of stress as well so I find knitting help me cope with these things um, also um, I've recently started to um, watch some knitting podcast on YouTube and I'm just like knitting and watch these podcasts I, I learned a lot from these podcasts like knitting traditions the gentle knitter uh, and it it also just it feels like there's someone uh, accompanying me like a friend there just chatting and knitting with me uh, it's just feels quite welcoming and um, and I also want to join this uh, knitting community and give something back uh, and bring some of my own uh, calmness in life to you hopefully um, I decided to call this podcast the seedling stitch because uh, for one thing my Chinese name is Xiaohe which means seedling and for another I just uh, I'm kind of still new in the knitting world. I'm still picking up new knitting techniques. So in some sense, I'm a seedling in the knitting world. Uh, so yeah, here's the here comes the name, the seedling stitch. Um, so I'll start with how I got into knitting and all these experiences. Um, I I was born from. <coughs> the far northeastern part of China, very cold. Uh, my mom and my grandma, they were, they're all knitters. Um, and I'm, I've always just been a very crafty person. Uh, I play with all sorts of handcrafts like origami and stamp carving. Uh, so uh, when I was a teenager, I tried to learn knitting from my, from my mom. Um, and uh, she taught me how to do the stock net stitch, like just basic knit stitch and pearl stitch. And I tried to make a muffler out of the out of the stock net stitch without knowing that with the pure stock net stitch, you always g get those rolling effect. So I kind of knit like about this much, and it got all rolling, and it's. It's like stock net is kind of a thin fabric, so it isn't really perfect for uh, like a scarf or a muffler. And I think the yarn they gave me wasn't really my favorite color, uh, so I end up discarding that project and went on with some other crafting. Um, so. Uh, so I picked up knitting again last year, September, when I was uh, listening to another podcast. Uh, it was just about culture in general, and in that one issue, um, they they talked about knitting because um, during that time it was the Tokyo Olympics, uh, and there was a British diver, uh, Tom Daly. And uh, he was knitting uh, when he was just watching all those Olympic games. And uh, after uh, he competed, he got the gold medal. He also knitted a small, like cozy for the gold medal, which is to keep it from all the scratches. It was quite fun. So I, I guess that that podcast decided to do uh, an episode on knitting. 
and they invited a guest uh, like who was also um, like a, a grad student studying overseas. Uh, he was, I think he was studying Britain um, and he took a knitting class there and learned all these things about knitting and he was sharing his experiences on, on that episode. And that kind of inspired me. Uh, I thought I, I'm also a graduate student studying overseas. I like handcrafting and I, I guess there might be some classes available in Vancouver. So I digged around and I, I found there's a little yarn shop just around the corner uh, and they were offering in-person classes. Uh, it is the uh, White Coast Wool shop and they were offering beginners knitting class in person. Uh, uh, it was a, a very, very, it was a very good deal. I think $50 for uh, two sessions. So uh, I registered and I got lucky because uh, I was the only student in that session. So I kind of got a, a private lesson, uh, I got a private lesson. So I will make, I will put the link. Uh, in the show notes so that if you're also in Vancouver and would like to learn knitting, uh, check out the class. Uh, uh, Zoe, who was the instructor, she's a very nice lady and I, I, I kind of regard her as my knitting mom. <laughs> uh, she taught me everything about knitting from the beginning. So I, I went to that classes. Um, the first class we did was just just pure garter stitch and we made a square and then we fold it and we make a, a hand warmer so that was about it uh, and in the second session I got quite impatient because I, uh, I I'm already finding just pure garter stitch a bit boring so I I added some pearl stitches and added some uh, combination like the seed stitch and to, to make a, a more a little bit more complicated one so I end up having the second uh, the second pair uh, of the hand warmer like this so some ribbing at the bottom and some regular uh, stock net stitch and then some seed stitch at the end and then you use the mattress stitch to uh, stitch them up and leave a hole for the thumb. So very, still very basic pattern, but I think very good for a beginner to start with. Uh, but at this point, I've, I've, uh, I've already abandoned this one. So now I kind of just fold it as a wrist rest for when I'm using the mouse. Cause in my work, I has to use computer a lot, and just for ergonomic purpose, I put the wrist pillow here um, to help me. And uh, also, since it's wool, and my skin kind of got sensitive with pure wool, uh, like for a prolonged time of contact, so <laughs> I I used another. Uh, cotton yarn to make a case for this little pillow and and now this is on my desk every day just when I'm, whenever I'm using the mouse so if you have some scrape yarn and you are also uh, working heavily with computers so this might be helpful for you uh, so after so that was my knitting class so after that two sessions of knitting classes, uh, I just took a dive into the knitting world and wanted to make more stuff. So I wanted to learn cable knitting. So I go on Ravelry and search for some free patterns for uh, cable hand warmers. Because with the scrape yarn I had, I might be able to make another pair of uh, hand warmers with cables. Uh, I found the pattern, but uh, I, I wasn't very happy about the cabling they did because it's not very symmetric. 
so I did some uh, alternation and uh, eventually I end up with this so uh, this is like my second pair of hand warmers this was knitted in the round and a very simple cabling and then some uh, seat stitch again and uh, with my own uh, with my own adaptation, I made these cables symmetric so that these goes to like uh, left on top of right and then this is right on top of left. So I think this is a three by three cabling and I, I, I wrote this into a pattern and published it for free in uh, Ravelry so, and there were there were people uh, uh, putting on their projects for these, so I was quite happy. So it uh, people using my own pattern, and I'm like still like a very beginner. I only started knitting for a month at that time, so I I was quite proud with these. Um, I, I guess if I am to knit these now, I I I would still pick up some stitches around the thumb holes and uh, make it warmer. So this has uh, this pair has kind of retired, but I'll keep them for sentimental purpose because these are my first pair of cable cable project uh, cabled projects. Uh, so I got confident, comfortable with cabling. I wanted to do more. Um, so I found I wanted to make a hat. I found another pattern. Uh, also a free pattern on Ravelry. This one is called the October Hat um, by Calburn Wool. I think they have a series of hat. Uh, there, are twi there, there were 12 hats for each of the month and they were like, different. Uh, there were different styles of hats uh, designed by different designers. They're all free. Uh, I, I'll put I'll put the link to all these patterns below in the show notes. Uh, so this was what I did. Uh, it involves a, a t provisional cost on or tubular cost on, uh, so that you ha you kind of have these uh, very stretchy ends. Um, but I, I think you you can just do with regular cast on. Um, if if you just cast on it quite loosely, this will be fine for a hat as well. Um, and I think I did one pattern repeat less because I have a small hat and also I kind of was using up all the yarn. So I wanted to have some leftover yarn to make this cute pom pom. So. So this is kind of my uh, most used hat during the winter. Uh, yeah. So uh, I think that concludes my knitting journey. Let me just check my notes. So now here it goes, the section of where I will review some knitting books and share some of the projects that I knitted from the book. Um, I, I love knitting books very much, I love collecting them, uh, not only because the pattern from the books, uh, but also because I like the photographies of these books, like they always pull up a whole story in the collection of the book, and, and I like to learn a little bit more than just how to knit a specific piece of knitwear. I'd also like to learn something about the designer uh, and like, something about their style. Um, so this time I'm gonna share this book with you, The Knitted Animal Friends by uh, Louise Crowther. This is my very first knitting book. Uh, uh, I, I bought this when I was still in my knitting class and I brought this to uh, Zoe, the instructor, and I just told her I, I want to knit these. And in the second class, she kind of ended up with just teaching me <laughs> almost 
all these techniques in these abbreviations like how to make one left how to make one right how to k2 together k3 together how to ssk um so it it is a, a very good knitting book because it allows you to uh try all the knitting techniques in a very small scale so that us uh, so that it's quicker to pick up uh some new techniques uh so it, it also has like a color work section uh with the stranded fire owl technique and uh uh in in partial uh so you learn everything about color work uh, it also teaches you how to do the stitch work, like how to do mattress stitches. They all have uh, very good uh, photos of these. So this book, uh, as you see, is uh, about all, all about these animal dolls. There are uh, 14 different animal dolls in it so you basically knit everything you knit the body of the animal and you knit uh, different uh, clothings uh, for each of the animal and the best thing is all these animals are uh, they have the same size so like if you uh, like this sweater but you don't want to knit a dog you want to knit a cat then you can knit the same sweater for a cat um, so that's the good part uh, this book, uh, so I'll introduce a bit about the yarn and the needle size they used. Uh, the bodies are knitted with um, this yarn, the Sheep Jays uh, Stone Washed. It is a sports weight yarn uh, in 78% uh, cotton, 22% acrylic, so it's quite soft and also fluffy, um, very warm to the skin. Um, you use 2.75 millimeter needle to knit the animal bodies uh, so, so that you create a very tight, dense fabric and the filling inside won't show through. Uh, the, animal, uh, the animal clothings are knitted with this, also the Sheep Jays yarn. Uh, the, but the Katona series on um, this one is 100% uh, uh, cotton yarn, um, a fingering, a fingering weight. Um, but I, uh, so it this feels kind of ropey, uh, not as like warm and fluffy as the stone washed or other wool, yarn, other pure wool yarn. Um, but they have many good colors. Uh, but I guess for the animal clothes, clothing, you can use any other fingering weight yarn. Uh, the needle size was 3.5 millimeter needle. Uh, so any yarn that can go with, uh, go with a, uh, go with a 3.5 millimeter needle should work. Um, so I'm gonna show some of the work I've done from this book. Uh, the first animal I've knitted is this hair this rabbit uh the tilly the rabbit and she has a fire owl cardigan and a cute little dress um gonna bring tilly this is this is my tilly um the face is a bit different than the book as i like a little smile for her and also my friend says this rabbit looks like me is it uh, maybe it's like the the mouth and like the distance between the two eyes that makes her like me and also maybe the skin tone <laughs> i don't know but I, I do also find she looks a bit like me um so for for the hair it's uh, for the uh, bunny body, uh, it's knitted with two colors, uh, a pure white and like this uh, oatmeal kind of color. And for example, for the for the this ear, you knit with intarsia method, so you kind of need 
two different balls of this oatmeal color and one ball of this white color and then um, you do intarsia and that's that's how I learned to do the intarsia and you knit them flat in one piece and then stitch them together with mattress stitch uh, so it's 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 kind of invisible <coughs> the stitch line is here but um, yeah, after you do the mattress stitch, it's hard, hardly visible. And also all the bodies are knitted in flat and then stitch them together and stitch them together at the back. Um, for the filling, uh, I bought I, I bought a $5 pillow from Ikea and I just used all the fillings from the $5 pillow and it, it can fill, I guess, perhaps six or seven animals with no problem. So it was a good deal. <laughs> um, about the clothing, uh, actually this, uh, the dress, the dress I can show you, it looks a little bit like this. So it's a short sleeved dress. It's knitted uh, in the round uh, with the raglan sleeve. So um, I have to say again, this book is so good because it teaches you how to do things in a small scale basically it teaches you how to do the raglan sleeves in in a, in, in a small scale and um, teaches you how to do like this a uh, diamond kind of pattern as well uh, and then i uh, this the this dress was knitted uh, was knitted in host garn super soft uh, because that's a yarn that i could I could buy at that time from the yarn shop um, and later I had to order from internet for these uh, Katona yarns for for the rest of the these animals. Um, the cardigan was done in stranded color work or fair ale uh, color work. This is a yoke construction so you start from the top and then you do in increases um, almost like every couple stitches in the carrot pattern oh, I, I really love this carrot pattern design for this rabbit um, I may someday knit uh, like a yoke cardigan similar to this but n not rabbit maybe like a flower or something so I'm going to knit something uh, like this so that I can wear the same cardigan at Tilly and we're just sisters <laughs> I guess uh, this is the first fair ale I've ever done is uh, it's not very flat perhaps as you can see because I mess up the yarn uh, so, uh, yarn choice I basically combine this cartona yarn with the uh, white whole scar yarn which is the 100% uh, wool and it's kind of thinner than the Katona yarn so the gauge wasn't really perfect when I'm combining these yarns and I kind of put the uh, flows too tight but I had to block it quite firmly um, so I guess it looks okay <laughs> for a first uh, Fair L work I guess it looks okay and She's just so cute. And also the little shoes. Uh, when I showed this to my mom, like, she, she was so excited and she said like, you can uh, make these for your babies, but I'm not at the point where I want to make babies now. So I'm, I'd rather make some animal dolls for now. Uh, that's Tilly. The second animal I made is, uh, so I, wanted to make uh, this Louis the Owl uh, but uh, I end up I end up making this sloth <laughs> because well I I find an owl with long arms and long legs kind of doesn't make sense this owl is a a bird and they have feathers and small claws um, but this body shape makes me think of 
a sloth with long arms, long legs, and you know, usually hanging in the tree like this. Um, so I adapted the pattern. So th this face shape kind of look like uh, a sloth. So they have the same face shape, uh, just without the ears. And then I made it this actual like uh, eye shadows. Uh, and th these were just an extra piece of garter stitch. And then I stitched them up to the face and then you have a sloth. And also because the rabbit looks like me, I wanted to make some animal that looks like uh, my partner. And he is a very tall guy with long arms and long legs. So, and he moves slowly, he speaks slowly. So I guess the sloth looks like him. Um, so here, here it is. And this sweater I made for the sloth uh, was the first animal clothing I did the, in stripe and the yarn I used was both uh, host garn super soft the blue is the glacier colorway the white is the bleached white colorway the same as the one I made for the rabbit uh, here's the small tail uh, the pants so for now the sloth doesn't have a proper pants this is actually like little panties <laughs> for the for the girl dolls because uh, i wanted to learn how to do some lacing from this pattern with like here so i just made this and now he's just wearing these shorts um i made an extra adaptation so i added some snap piece to the limbs so and also the hands between the hands so that I can oop, and oop, and then perhaps like hang, hang the sloth in a in a tree or something <laughs> so it just really looks like a sloth and also I had some scrape yarn so I made him a hat because the sloth does look a little bit bald. So <laughs> I made the same uh, the same uh, cable hat as my October hat, same yarn. So I just uh, used perhaps like one third of the stitches used for my hat, and yeah. So. That's all the animals um, I have. So highly, highly recommended. Um, next, I'm gonna talk about some finished objects. Well, since I've started knitting, well, it's a, it, it has been about six months, half a year or so. I've had many, many projects done. Uh, mostly accessories and only one sweater, which I'm wearing now. Um, but today I'm going to do a cat themed uh, finished object. So I'm going to show you all um, all the FOs uh, that is cat themed. So a um, little bit of the story now. Uh, so after my grandma learned that I started knitting, um, he's very excited because uh, uh, he used to knit like uh, woolly pants and sweaters for me when I was little um, but now she couldn't knit anymore because arthritis um, but she did have a lot of stash yarn or like scrape yarn from doing old projects um, and then she, uh, she, she decided to mail all her yarn to me and there were a lot of yarn and uh, collected them into uh, bags, there were all sorts of different colors. I have um, uh, sorted them into different ways. These are the fingering waist bags, you can see all sorts of different colors. And also I have 
made a sample card out of my grandma's yarn and I've written like how many grams I have for each of uh, the different yarns and I've categorized them by weight like from the perhaps the RN or bulky weight to decay and then to the fingering and also the different more hairs I had. Um, so there aren't a, a lot of yarn for each of the colors, so that's the challenge. I cannot just make a one colored a sweater out of any of those. So I had to, I had to do color work, but I, I like color work. So I just stare at these cards every day and think what project I could make and how can I combine them to make something, something fun. Um, so that comes the, the first, uh, not the first color work I've done. Uh, so that, that comes the first color work uh, project I've done out of my grand grandma's yarns. Sorry, I had to reset these because there were some car noise outside. Okay, so out of my grandma's beautiful stash with many many colors, uh, I decided to make my first uh, color work out of those, which is this ki kitty mittens. Um, there were no patterns of these. I I, I found the uh, I found I only found photos of these uh, from a Japanese designer called Maliko Mikuni, and she was selling um, selling the whole thing as a kit, including the yarn her, of, of her own brand and uh, the pattern itself. But uh, she doesn't just sell sell the pattern alone, so unfortunately. But I was able to just look at those photos. I really like the cat pattern, um, and I wanted to uh, make a cat mitten um, that has, uh, so that the cat has the same color as my own cat. Um, so I, I end up, I and I, I ended up transcribing the pattern just from a photo of a knitted mitten itself. Um, it was funny. I I did it with uh, my Animal Crossing game. Uh, I don't know if you played the video game Animal Crossing on Switch, uh, where there is uh, there is a designer tool in the game uh, where you can basically do pixel arts. And <laughs> I just look at a native result of a, a pair of the mittens and then uh, just. just Make a make a pixel, uh, make a pixel last uh, a figure out of the results, and then I change them into a pattern. Um, I uh, I have posted this project on Ravelry. I'll I'll put a link in below. So if you think my <laughs> pixel art would help you make these, um, feel free to feel free to use it. Um, it's quite unfortunate they, that they don't sell the pattern itself. I guess the designer wasn't very active on Ravelry as well. But, ah, that's a, such a cute pattern. So uh, these were made with, I think, four millimeter needles. So I, I made the rib in the smaller size and then uh, changed into larger sizes, four millimeter to do the stranded color work. Uh, and I added a little bubble here for the cat uh, because uh, my cat Vicky, uh, the blue cat one, I think she's a Russian blue or a Korat, I don't know. I adopted her from a local rescue. And she she's uh, mainly gray, but uh, at the collar, like around the neck, she has this uh, small round a white dot so this bubble is trying to just mimic her uh, the, the white dot she has and then you knit up to here and then you do the decreases I think you do the slip slip knit on the right hand side and then do the K2 together on the left hand side and and same so same on the back and front uh, so you you when you knit, you leave uh, some stitches here for the thumb hole, then you pick up the stitches and then knit the thumb. Um, at the beginning, I, 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 
I didn't left. Uh, I left it open purposefully because I wanted to operate on my phone in winter. But then this year uh, in Vancouver, it snowed a lot, and I wanted to play with the snow. So I wanted to have a pair of uh, mittens uh, that is fully sealed. So I I uh, I pick up the stitches again and then sealed the thumb hole. And I think my, my grandma's yarn, these were pu uh, uh, pure woolly yarn, um, feel, feels, feels quite rustic. Um, and they were very waterproof, very good for uh, building a snowman or building a snow cat, if you, if you like cats. So that's the first uh, cat themed finished objects. Um, the second one I'm gonna show is the big piece. It's my first sweater and the cat is here. So, uh, so I'm gonna show the back, the tail is here, the front is here. Uh, and also the, these cable look kind of nice at the finishing. So uh, this, um, this I follow the pattern from uh, by another Japanese designer called uh, uh, Tokai Erika, and um, for it, this this book has an, uh, so th this is uh, just a pure color work knitting book by this designer. Um, unfortunately, it it doesn't have a. Uh, a Japan, oh, sorry, it doesn't have an English per, uh, version published. Uh, there's uh, a Chinese version which I bought and follow the pattern. Um, there's a Korean version and recently uh, they published the French version of it. And I believe you can buy the French version in in Canada. I, I saw I saw this sell this in sell the, the this knitting book in indigo.com. I'm gonna put the link there. Um, I guess if you know a little bit French, you can read that book as well. And actually, this book is um, there's a lot of diagrams, so you don't actually need to uh, to learn <laughs> either French or Japanese for understanding the whole thing. You only need to understand the Japanese symbols, uh, how they symbolize all the knitting stitches in, uh, like in the squares. Like they, they have all these symbols. Maybe uh, if maybe if people are interested, I could dedicate an episode just talking about these uh, Japanese knitting symbols and how to read uh, Japanese patterns. Um, that would be helpful. That might be helpful. Uh, okay, back about this sweater. Uh, first sweater I've ever made. Uh, so this sweater was uh, knitted in uh, 4.5 millimeter needles for the major part. Um, the yarn is from my grandma. This a uh, beautiful green bluish color, um, which is kind of my favorite color. I like uh, green or teal, like bluish green. Um, I think my grandma's yarn is a bit too blue, so I uh, and it's DK weight, which is not uh, not thick enough. So I added another strand of fingering weight yarn, uh, which is the Host Garn, the color uh, Host Garn Super Soft, and uh, the color the colorway was King's Finger. Uh, which is like a green, uh, it's, it's a bit darker green and a little tint of blue, little tint of yellow, that sort of color. And I guess you can, you can probably see, see it and I'm quite happy with how this color turned out. Uh, so I started with knitting swatches from uh, just my grandma's yarn. This is just my grandma's yarn and it's too loose and it kind of showed through. So I added another uh, strand of uh, Holst, Holst Garn Super Soft. I really like, like love Holst Garn. I, I use Holst Garn a lot. Uh, they are a company from Denmark and 
they said they saw uh, non non superwash like and there are still some spinning oil on it so it feels a bit rusty but after you uh, wash them and block them they uh, fluff very well so and they have many many beautiful colors anyway so I added that uh, extra strand of host garb um, the body of this sweater is uh, knitted in the flat in pieces so the front pieces uh, so they actually had a provisional cast on from uh, from just here so above the above the ribbing and then it's knitted from bottom up uh, from this uh, from from the provisional cast on and then you knit the back piece in the same way uh, you stitch them up together with the mattress stitch and then uh, you join join in the round and pick up the provisional stitch a uh, provisional provisional cast on and then do the ribbing uh, from from top down the color work were done mainly in intarsia uh, but like so mainly in intarsia so like if I if I show you the back of these it's like it's like that so this part this part is mainly the it's the main color and then with the intarsia uh, you have this kind of edge um, there were many colors I think there is the uh, there there is the black color the yellowish color and I guess the silver color um, the original pattern they used a different a different color combination they were actually knitting uh, a silver tabby cat but my own cat he is a, a yellow brownish tabby so I change the color to match his color and also in the original pattern the cats a whisker were done in I think a brown color brown colored yarn but my cat he has white whiskers so I used uh, the white the white yarn um, so mainly the color work mainly done in, in, in Tarsia, but locally when things get quite complicated I just ended up use stranded color work locally so that I don't end up having 10 balls of different color yarn and it was just a mess so uh, so you do the front you do the back piece and then uh, also the arm, uh, the sleeves were also done, uh, were, were knitted in the flat and then uh, they join together at this shoulder line as perhaps, as perhaps you can see. Um, the, this is where you join the shoulder and the front piece. And, and after you join everything, you pick up stitches around the collar and knit the ribbing above. Um, so, uh, I was quite lucky because I used I uh, used up almost all my grandma's yarn. There were like 15 grams left for this blue color, and I used three. Uh, I think I used three cakes of the host garn fingering weight yarn, um, and I, I I didn't have enough yarn just to do these two sleeves, so I used a different color. So it looks kind of intentional. So here I use the glazier uh, whole scar yarn uh, to combine with my grandma's yarn and it's I think you can still see the changes a bit subtle uh, from greenish to more bluish um, but yeah I, I think I'm quite happy with this color work um, uh, yeah so that's the sweater and the last piece of finished objects with cat themed is another kitty fingerless mittens. Uh, this again is also from a Japanese designer. Uh, her name is Miten Ya. I think that's her uh, designer name. Uh, she's quite active on Instagram as well. I'm gonna put link there. 
and she recently published a lovely, lovely maiden book. Uh, it's although it's in Japanese, but it's uh, it's only about color work. So uh, if you just look at the chart, you be able to uh, do the do the color work. I think, and um, they have the digital version available in Amazon. So I guess you can also purchase that if you're interested. And this is um, this pattern comes. Uh, this is one of the pattern from that book. I love cats. <laughs> I love cats. Um, so this were this were also done with my grandma's yarn. She has uh, these three different colors of yarns. I think the the beige or the light yellow, uh, the dark brown, and the, the coffee kind of color. And I just used them to knit a pattern from the book. Um, so two by two ribbing, and then uh, a, a lat latwin, a latwin breeze. Um, I, I, I do like these braids and these are surprisingly not very difficult to make. You basically just bring the uh, bring the yarn to the right side and then you purl them and then you uh, you carry the float e each time. You alternate colors, carry the floats, you purl and you got this. And you just do this for two rounds but you kind of carry the floats on different side. I guess there, there will be a tutorial on YouTube somewhere for Latvian braids and it's very decorative to add in on, uh, on the gloves. Uh, and then some simple color, not sim uh, some uh, color work and then just a bunch of cats and then so again some ribbing for the thumb and that's it. So I guess I wanted to make this because spring is coming and my thick uh, DK weight uh, mitten is too warm for me. So I am I'm wearing these every day when I go out. Quite cute. And this is supposed to be uh, my, my other cat. So one cat is this tabby, tabby guy. And then I have the the blue Russian blue girl, um, and she's perhaps about this color. So this glove is for her, and this sweater is for uh, for for Benz, the boy cat. And yeah, that's uh, I think that's everything I want to show for the finished objects. Uh, for Work in progress. I am only working on one object for now, which is uh, the cardigan number no. eight by my favorite knitwear. Um, it is a boxy shape cardigan with two pockets, and I'm I'm going to make it as a as a jacket for myself in uh, in spring. Uh, here it is. Uh, I, I carry all my knitting projects in <laughs> in a cereal bar boxes as uh, as a grad student um, I'm not rich and <laughs> I, I I'd rather recycle things for uh, for to, to hold my projects rather than buying fancy bags and I only buy yarn when I have some projects in mind. So I, I wouldn't have a yarn acquisition, uh, yarn acquisition section for you. So uh, for my work in progress, so here it is. Uh, the original pattern calls for uh, an Aran Tweed yarn. Let's see the brand. Uh, I think it calls for the Isagur Aran Tweed yarn, which is a bulky to Aran weight yarn. Uh, hold in together with a string of uh, fingering weight or light fingering weight alpaca yarn. I think the brand is Alpaca One, also from Isagur. Uh, and I substituted uh, the yarn with host guard because, as I said, I love host guard a lot. And they recently uh, released some new colors, host guard. 
for their super soft, uh, for their super super soft series, and I really love this. I'm gonna here it is. It's the this hyacinth color, which is let's see, which is a uh, purple but with some blue specks or maybe a little bit pink specks, and it's just beautiful. And they were these new colors were on sale last month. So uh, I just wanted to try these colors, um, and I end up I ended up buying uh, four different color of yarns and hold them in together for this project. So I bought the super soft hyacinth and another one, yeah, and the super soft crocus, which is a um, darker purple yarn with navy color specs and then this is the ties uh, so this is a 70% wool with 30% silk also it's a different uh, it's also host garn but a different series of yarn and the colorway is sea lavender which is purple but with some uh, white dots and Oscar alpaca, very light fingering weight, purple yarn, and colorway is, I think, uh, romance. So in uh, in their website, they have uh, they have a spreadsheet showing you all the compatible colors, so that you can buy uh, colorways from uh, colorways from the different series, and then combine them together. Um, so that you won't just get a, a solid color. So it, it has different shades. For example, here it's different shades of purple, uh, which I really like. I do like mixing different uh, different yarns of similar shades like what I did here for my sweater. So now I'm doing it again. So I'm holding all these four strands of yarn together to make my... Uh, cardigan number eight now and I do really really like the result uh, so I wasn't sure about the gauge so I so instead of knitting a swatch I just knitted the pocket the piece of the pocket and then calculate the gauge and surprisingly I achieved perfect gauge it's uh, 15 stitches by 23 rows 15 stitches by 23 rows yeah. in a 10 millimeter square and uh, yeah so I'm I'm quite proud of my <laughs> yarn choice and for now I have finished the two pockets so this project is knitted uh, top down back piece first and then you pick up uh, stitches to knit the front panel up on just right uh, up you finish it right above the armpit and then you join them together to knit uh, below and then you pick up stitches around the sleeves to knit the sleeves and then you stitch the pocket. So I guess next time perhaps I'll be wearing this and show you. I, I do like the color combination result. It feels more kind of like a, an oil painting so it many shades. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I guess that's everything for this episode. Um, I hope it went well. Um, I'm, uh, I'm on Instagram as SD underline as Athena. And I'm on Ravelry as Athena Liu. I'll, I'll put all the link for, for my own profiles here. And feel free to leave a comment below like and subscribe uh, and I think I can do this perhaps once per month showing you all my new um, projects and my new my other knitting books and the work in progress what are you knitting um, um, yeah so I guess I'll see you next time and stay safe um, Stay safe, stay healthy, stay cozy, and happy knitting.